This story begins in 2018, when my friend challenged me to a game of Word Blitz on Facebook. I wasn't really sure what it was, but the premise of the game is quite simple. There is a 4x4 grid of letters, and you need to find words by making a path in this grid. You need to find as many words as you can within the time limit, with longer words giving more points. If you are old enough, you might know this as the popular board game Boggle. So after playing a few games, it became pretty clear that my friend was a lot better than me, which was especially funny because English is his second language, while it is my first. This all happened during Christmas break, and I was really bored at the time, and I remember looking at this game and thinking like, this is really simple, a computer should be able to do this quite well, right? So I'm like, okay, screw it, let's see what we can do. I ended up writing a program where you enter the letters on the grid, and then it goes and finds all the possible words, and then it actually controls your mouse and plays the game for you. Here's what the final product looks like in action. And I'm going to leave the sound on because it's pretty satisfying. Okay, you get the point by now. The bot actually finds so many words that it doesn't have enough time to enter them all. In fact, the bottleneck of how many words you can enter is limited by like how fast your mouse can move and how fast the browser will pick up the mouse movements. There's this thing in Word Blitz called the Daily Challenge where it's like a game that anyone can enter. Um, and if we run the bot on that, we get in the top 0%, which you know, it's not a bad score. I found this group on Facebook dedicated to Word Blitz with over 20,000 members, which is pretty big. Um, and I wanted to go and like mess with some of the people in there and just try the bot on them. But when I looked at the group, I saw that it was like a pretty wholesome and quite competitive group. And I didn't want to like ruin that environment, I guess. But you should totally do this to your friends. In the next part of this video, we're going to go into the technical details. So if this doesn't interest you, then feel free to close the video now. So I'm going to split this into three separate problems. So the first problem we have is how do we get all the strings inside the grid, right? So how do we get all the possible paths of exploration? So we can have a path like this, or we can have a path that goes something like this, right? Like we need to find every single possible path. The second problem we have is of these paths that we find, which of them are valid words? So if we had a path like this, like cowboy, this would be a valid word, right? But if we had a path that was like talk, then this is not a valid word. So we need to find out which strings are valid words in the English dictionary. And the final problem is, once we've identified the words that are valid, we then need to actually have the computer move the mouse and play the game for us. Let's start with finding all the strings. So consider for a minute that we start in this top left tile here, C. Now from C, where can we go? Well, we can go to this C below it, or this diagonal O, or this O to the right, okay? And then from each of these three tiles that we can visit, we then need to ask the same question, over and over and over again. So basically when you do that, you get a tree like this. And this is our search space, right? And I haven't drawn the full tree here because it would be very, very big. But you can imagine that this is a, a giant tree and we need to explore it somehow. So how are we gonna explore it? Well, we just need to use a graph traversal algorithm. So here I chose to use a DFS, a depth first search. Let's see what this DFS function could look like. So the first thing we need to do inside this function is check if the tile is actually within the grid and that we haven't visited that tile before. Otherwise, we're gonna run into an infinite loop. The next thing we need to do is add the tile to the visited set so the above line actually works. Then we update the current word to include the tile that we're currently visiting and then run this magic is valid English function, which we're gonna talk more about later. And if the current word is a valid English word, then we're gonna add it to our list of found words. Then we recursively call the function on all of the surrounding tiles. Now we need to run this DFS function starting from every single tile on the grid because that's where all the words could start from, right? And if we run this code, it should eventually end up finding every single possible string that can be made inside this grid. The next part of the problem is determining whether a string is a valid English word. To do this, I downloaded a giant dictionary text file off the internet containing all English words. And thanks to modern hardware, we can actually load the entire file into main memory for fast lookups. There are two data structures that I considered for this string lookup. 
a hash set and a try. I ended up going with a try because it allows us to do a sweet optimization later. While we are storing valid words, we can also populate a map containing an array of coordinates corresponding to the tiles in the word so that we can draw it later. Here is a basic representation of what the code for drawing might look like. Basically, we just go through each word and drag the mouse along the tile pixel locations. Now that we have everything we need, we can go ahead and code this up. Let's go. And done. Let's run it and see what happens. Wow, this is taking quite a while. It hasn't crashed, but at the current state of the code, this will take 9 minutes and 24 seconds to execute, which is useless because each round of word blitz is 90 seconds. Now, if you remember this search space from before, you can see that it gets fatter the longer the word gets. And realistically, we're going to find very few words in the grid that are longer than 9 characters, if any at all. So we can optimize our program by cutting the DFS short once it reaches 9 characters. With this new optimization, our program now runs in 28 seconds. This is not bad, but we can definitely do better. Let's look at this try excerpt. And imagine that while we are searching in our DFS, we maintain a pointer of our current position within the try. We can see that even once we have found the word cow, we should keep exploring this path because the words cowboy and cowboys might follow. However, once our current word starts with two Cs, then no words in the English dictionary can be formed, so we should terminate the DFS early. This optimization speeds up things dramatically, with the program now only taking 4 seconds, and we can remove the 9 character limit from before. I tried to make a graph to demonstrate the difference in the number of recursive calls that the program takes with and without optimizations, but the difference is too big. You get the idea though, big change. If you want to run the bot yourself, or take a look at the code involved, there is a link in the description to the GitHub repo. Thanks for watching my first video. Feel free to give me feedback in the comments. Have a good day and stay safe.